Hi, I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the author of What is WebSphere? Um, and the Exam Scam series of certification guides, including the Sun Certified Java Associate Certification Guide. Um, I'd really appreciate it if you head over to pulpjava.com, my website, and bought a couple of copies of books directly off us. Um, maybe even click on a Google ad. Um, we do sell on Amazon, but we always appreciate it if you buy it directly off us. We ship it out with love. Anyways, one of the things that I wanted to do right here was actually demonstrate the idea of servlet listeners and lifecycle listeners and context listeners that are available with J2EE and the servlet API. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create in my web module a new web resource and specifically I'm going to create a, a session listener and I'm going to create a context listener. Now the idea of listeners is basically a, a problem that has arisen in many 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 J2EE applications in the past is hey I need something to happen when my web module starts up or I need to, something to be placed in a user's HTTP session as soon as a session is assigned to them. How do you do that? Well I mean there are all sorts of different crazy ways of doing it in the past. Um, sometimes people would code something into the init method of a servlet um, and have that servlet load at startup. Anyways, it, it, there were ways around it, but, but none of the ways of accomplishing these things were elegant. And so one of the things they have, they created, was listeners. And I'm going to create a listener of my own. I'm going to put in the com.examscam.web.listener package. We call it my cool listener. Notice that uh, there's no superclass here other than object. Um, the listeners are actually interfaces, and there's a number of, of different interfaces of available. There's a context listener, session listener, even a request listener. There's even attribute listeners that can notify you when when attributes are added or removed to a particular object scope, either the context, the session, the request. The ones that I'm interested in are the context listener and the session listener. Um, and I'm going to implement those two interfaces in this particular class. Now you can create many classes that are listeners. Um, so I can have one class that's a context listener, one class that's a session listener, um, and add as many of those to my application as I want. Um, however, I'm just interested in the, the context listener and the session listener. And again, these address the issue of, hey, I've got a particular resource. I've got a, a user coming in, how do I make sure that they've always got something in their session? Or how do I make sure that something's available as soon as the application starts? So you notice that I'm implementing the HTTP listener here and the, the context listener. Um, in one of my applications I was generating a unique number for a user, a magic number, and I don't know, it needed to be placed in the session. And every time uh, my, my code ran, I always had some ugly code that said, you know, if session is null, get session true, then throw something into the session. Um, you can eliminate this type of code here um, by using session listeners. And so I've actually got some hacked out code here that I'm just going to paste in. A little bit of cheating. But essentially, when a session is created, I'm going to put a magic number into the user session. I'm going to copy and paste some code here. And so when the session's created, this particular method, session created, is going to be triggered on my session listener. And when that's triggered, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a magic key, a number between 0 and 100, kind of system or current time milli is modulated by 100. I'm going to take that magic key and I'm going to put it into the session with the name magic key. Um, and I'm going to do printout, hey, session initialized. And so that's something I can do uh, when a session is created. Um, who knows, maybe even when the session is destroyed, I'll print out something like, uh, hey, session destroyed. I'm just going to put annihilated in there, but I don't know how to spell annihilated. So session destroyed seems fine for me. Um, also, I want to do something when the, the context is initialized. And the context is really the application itself, once the application is loaded. And what am I going to do here? Well, what have I got canned? Um, well, it looks like I'm going to put a timestamp into the context. Okay, and that's available to everybody. So um, right here, the servlet context is initialized. And notice it's not the context that's passed in. It's actually servlet context event that's passed in. You can then ask the event for the context and then do anything to the context that you want. I'm going to put a timestamp in, java.util.date. Call that timestamp. Maybe even do a little printout and say, hey, the context was initialized. 
And so that's it. That is how you create a listener. Now, one of the things that should be mentioned is that part of the Haitian voodoo that makes this work is an entry in the web.xml file. And so if you want to add a listener, just coding the listener isn't enough. You actually have to have a reference to that listener inside of the web.xml file. And there you can actually see right there. Listeners, I have one called My Cool Listener. You can have as many as you like. And inside the web.xml file, you'll actually see that the listener has to be registered. So that's important. A lot of people, they'll, they'll code the listener, they'll throw it into their war file, and it doesn't get triggered, and they wonder why. Um, I'm telling you why. It's got to have an entry in that web.xml file. Okay, now the other thing I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to create a, a simple little JSP here that actually proves that the listener is working. And how am I going to prove that? Well, I had a one listener stuff some information into the context, that timestamp. I also had, uh, and so what am I going to, and I also had a, a magic key placed in the user session using the listener. I'm just going to pull those out inside of this JSP. So I'll call this the um, tree falls in a forest JSP. Because if a tree falls in a forest, is anybody here? That's the question. Um, and maybe our listeners can answer that question for us. Um, and what am I going to do here? I'm going to code this. Um, I don't know, do I have a, a session placed in there? I'm just looking for the session directive, but it looks like I don't. Maybe I'll just write some code. I want to make sure that my session actually gets created. And I do have some canned code here. Oh, I thought I had some canned code there. Yeah, there we go. There we go. And what am I going to do here? I'm just going to paste that code in. Just like to have some print out there. And what have I got here inside of this code? Well, uh, nothing too too crazy. A little try and catch block. I always like to catch my exceptions. Um, and I'm going to say, hey, the magic key that was placed in your session, and then pull out the magic key, request I get session. I'm going to say, hey, there's a timestamp in the context, and pull out that timestamp and, and print it out to the client. Oh, look at this. The, the evil invalidate. Actually cleaning up a session. And then after that, I'm going to kill the session after this JSP runs. So each time this runs, a new session will be created. Now, now this isn't a good idea in code to do every time. You want to use it to keep their session until they log out. But here it'll prove uh, that the session is being destroyed. And in, in fact, the session is, is listening. The session listener is listening for that to be de destroyed. And we should get a printout to our console. So I'm going to click Control S and save that. I'm also going to just verify that Magic Key and Timestamp are the exact same names that were used when I put some information into my session. Yeah, there's Timestamp all lowercase, and the Magic Key. Geez, I don't like that uppercase letter when you just use a text string. I like all, all lowercase since there's no design time checking. But hey, uh, this is all just uh, just for learning. And so now what am I going to do? Well, I'm actually going to I'm going to stop my server restart the server and then test this application. Okay, and looking at this flood of red down here, I'm a little nervous, but you can actually see that uh, everything seems to be working. So the magic key was a 94. Um, also a timestamp was actually found inside of my context. If I do a refresh, it looks like these sessions keep getting recreated because uh, um, I kill the session in the JSP, session invalidate. And even if I go in and I, I take a look at uh, the information here in the systemout.println's, you can actually see my systemout.println's in the, the listeners for the session saying, hey, session initialized, session destroyed. I'm not too sure what that exception is up top there. Um, but certainly uh, the listeners are, are running. I was actually just looking for the little output that says uh, for my context listener, but I'm not too sure if that's going to be found in the... Um, oh, well there you go. Context initialized. It is found in the test environment. So, um, and that's actually the output that comes from the cool listener. Where is the cool listener? My cool listener. And there we go, context initialized. So indeed, everything seems to be working properly. Now, uh, that's it for looking at lifecycle listeners. As I said, uh, I am the author of What is WebSphere? 
and at the webmaster of pulpjava.com. I'd love it if you came over to my website, supported the site, um, picked up a couple of copies of my certification guides or what is Webster. I'm sure you know someone that could use a copy of that book. Um, pick it up off our website too directly. Uh, we sell on Amazon, um, but uh, we always package it out with love, keep them in stock, and send them out the next day if you buy them off our website. And again, check out pulpjava.com or examscam.com click on a Google ad and uh, kind of help support what we're doing here. Anyways, that's it for now. Um, the last thing I'm going to leave you is a salutation that says, Happy Webster.